seven years ago today, 13-year-old Abigail Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German vanished while walking the Delphi Historic Trails. Their bodies were found the next day, a quarter mile from where they were last seen on the Monon High Bridge. And for years, their murders remained a tragic mystery that haunted the small town of Delphi, Indiana. But in 2022, police arrested this man, Richard Allen, claiming that an unspent round from his gun tied him to the murders of Abby and Libby. But Allen maintains his innocence. So while the families of those two beautiful girls continue waiting for justice, we're wondering, what do the case forensics tell us? We have two outstanding guests to talk about this. Still with me, forensic death investigator, uh, professor, at Jacksonville State University. He's also the host of the Body Bags podcast, Joseph Scott Morgan, still standing by with us. And one of my Court TV colleagues, the brilliant Barbara McDonald. Uh, she is a documentary producer here, a journalist for many years who's done great work, especially on the Delphi case, even before you came uh, to join us at Court TV, Barbara, and we were so glad you did. Uh, you were hard at work on this case. So if I may start with you in terms of the evidence, what evidence is there that's essentially tying Richard Allen to these crimes? Well, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. Uh, there are his own statements that he was out at the trails that day. There's some debate about what time he was actually out there and what time he left, which will be significant. But he did say that he was out there that day. Witness statements have described a man who looks similarly to Richard Allen, uh, who was dressed the same way that he says he was dressed that day. Um, I think we have some of the other points we're going to put up on the screen. Uh, we also know that uh, some witnesses saw the car that appears to be his car out at the trails that day. And um, mm -hmm. the 40 caliber bullet. Yes. The unspent round yes. that was found between the bodies. Right. Uh, and my understanding is that discovery was made some days after the murder. So when oh. the bodies were found on the 14th of February, mm -hmm. seven years ago tomorrow now, mm -hmm. uh, they did secure that crime scene for about three days and they searched it and then they cleared it for about a day, day and a half, mm -hmm. and then they re-secured it. My understanding is that unspent shell was discovered during that second search after the scene had been re-secured. Really? And it was found under the dirt. It wasn't just laying out in the open. Mm -hmm. um, it had been somewhat buried, whether intentionally or through time and the elements, we don't know. But oh. that is the bullet that they're saying was ejected or cycled through right. his pistol right. that they discovered during the search warrant. Barbara, thank you for that. Joseph Scott Morgan, I wanted to talk to you about that in particular. Uh, what does hearing this information from Barbara now make you think about the securing of the scene, the clearing of it, the re-securing of it, and then the discovery of this round? Well, the biggest problem with this is the resecuring because you can't really resecure anything once you've released it. And um, that's, that's a major problem because that's any defense attorney worth their salt is going to move forward with that and say, well, how do we know that something wasn't placed down there in that interim, that, that kind of vacuum that that creates at that moment in time, because the area is completely unsecured, uh, or at least that's what they're saying uh, by their own, own admission. That's problematic. It's problematic moving forward with the case. And the fact, you know, as my friend Barbara had alluded to, that when they found the round, which I have actually one right here. This is a 40 caliber round right here, un, unfired. Um, when they found this round, uh, it was beneath the surface of the dirt. So you have to be able to answer this question. How long had it been there? And you look and you see, because this is a brass round, you, you think about, well, is there corrosion on it? Uh, and uh, where's the dirt embedded on this thing? Um, and it, it can be problematic, really. I mean, it's a significant piece of evidence, but again, if you, you don't have this cohesion at the scene, that can be problematic. Right. Uh, Professor Jake, you're the best having that, that round there. And um, when, when we think about this, um, they're saying that it cycled through his right. pistol, his Sig Sauer, but it wasn't fired from. 
Uh, the markings on it, Professor Joe, those markings would still be there, right? Would they not, like if he, uh, I guess, maybe racked uh, the gun or how, how do you think this might have happened? Yeah, you've got you've got a, what are referred to as extractor and ejector marks mm -hmm. on on actually, if you think about, it, for lack of a better term, on the fuselage of of the of the projectile itself, or on the body of the thing, and so there are these definitive little marks. And what they're saying is that the firearms examiner, this is a six-hour platform, by the way, that he had the brand when he cycled this thing. And that is, if you've ever seen on television where somebody racks around into a, a weapon, well, they're not just racking it in. If there's one in the chamber, it's going to go flying out. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Julie, those marks on an unspent round on the body of this thing are not as robust scientifically as the ballistic markings that you have on a fired round, the actual projectile. Mm -hmm. So it's not quite as done and done as people might think when it comes to a, an ejected round like that. Sure. Th this explainer is so helpful, Professor. Thank you. Barbara, let me go back to you, please, on what might be missing in terms of evidence that's linking him. You really dug, dug deep <laughs> into this one with Richard yeah. Allen. What and do you think is missing? There's a lot. Um, uh, we don't have the murder weapon or mm -hmm. weapons. We don't know exactly what was used. They've described it as a sharp-edged weapon, but we, we don't know if they have that, if that has any evidence contained on it. Uh, according to the defense attorneys, there's no DNA of Richard Allen at the crime scene on the girls. There's none of their DNA on, on him that that anybody has put in any of the court filings. Uh, we don't know anything about any fingerprints. Apparently there aren't any fingerprints linking him and there's no hair and fibers linking him to the scene. And then also some of the theory is that perhaps these girls were catfished and lured out there to be killed. There's no electronic evidence linking him to the girls. They took his cell phones, they took his laptops, his iPads, all of his electronic items and there's no link to the girls there. So. You know, is there more evidence than right. what we know about? Probably, hopefully. Sure. And uh, when we get to trial, hopefully we'll see all that, but um, that could be a, a long ways off. Right. Barbara, one of the biggest questions I get whenever anyone asks me about this case is how were those girls murdered? To this day, we still don't know how exactly, do we? We we do know from some of the filings from the defense attorneys in this case that um, it was a, a gruesome scene. Mm -hmm. There were injuries to their necks mm -hmm. uh, caused by a sharp-edged weapon, uh, but they have not gone into more detail than that. Um, I do know that you know the investigators who were out at the scene who saw these girls out there that day uh, say that it's a scene they're never ever going to forget. Mm. Um, and you know, just one more note on this anniversary: it is the seventh anniversary. The families want us to remember these beautiful girls, Abby and Libby. They were 13 and 14. Libby would be 21 today. Abby would be turning 21 in June. Um, huge loss for their families, for their community, and uh, they are absolutely missed. And so yes. we should be putting some of the focus today on, on them. That's exactly why we wanted to do this segment, Barbara. Exactly why, because here on this show, it's about the victims. Those girls are what this case is about. We all hope their families get justice and we send them good thoughts. Uh, thank you both for this uh, discussion. This is very helpful. Professor Joseph Scott Morgan, always great to have your expertise. Thank you kindly. Barbara McDonald, I want you back again and again. <laughs> again on the show <laughs> and you're busy you, doing Julie. other things here at Court TV but thank you so much. I always much. have time for you. Oh you're the thank best. You. Thank you.